Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I am literally watching CNBC right now. I'm watching Jim Cramer talk and all these pundits talking about the world economy, which is a complete nightmare of a joke. And they're trying to act, rationalize all of this and act like everything's great. Oh, this will all be worked out. We're talking, I mean, these are just a few of the things. I just made a couple of notes on the craziness that's going on that, that we're seeing right now. Negative interest rates across the board. <clears throat> There's uh, airport, excuse me, <clears throat> there are airport protests in Hong Kong that have shut the airport down. You got treasury yields tanking. You've got <clears throat> whispers of more QE this, QE that, which is their solution anytime their irresponsibility has gotten us in a mess. And as I'm talking right now, by the way, I'm watching the Drop Gold commercial on CNBC right now from Grayscale Investments about how you should buy Bitcoin over gold. This is the first time I had seen this commercial on, while I've been watching CNBC. I'm telling you what, you, you, you have to ask yourself if this was all planned and it was all planned to push the button on digital assets right when when the, the when the failures of all of these central banks were finally exposed and i feel like we are right in the middle of the silly joke of a financial of, of a central planning central bank experiment we were right in the middle of watching it all collapse worldwide in my i mean that's what it looks like now Will they try to do all of the these unforeseen, you know, last time it was, they called it QE, this time they'll come up with an, a new marketing terminology for it and they'll all get in the room and say, yeah, maybe the public will buy this and they'll come up with some new term. It, it won't be quantitative easing. It, it, it might be um, uh, quantitative enlightenment or who knows what they'll, who knows what they'll call it, but, but it, it, it will be code for printing money and irresponsibly destroying and and uh, deflating our currency. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I am all, my throat is like giving me problems this morning. I'm sorry. Okay, well, let's move along. And the other thing I wanted to, I wanted to keep on mentioning is that in Denmark, you can now get a mortgage where you don't have to pay interest rates. This is the upside down world that we now live in. And when you watch the traditional financial media, they are going to tell you that this is okay. This is all, they're not going to tell you that this is one flew over the cuckoo's nest, which is what it really is. Those people are, it is sick what's going on. And this is where we've arrived. I read another article this morning. I may be covering it today. I can't remember. But there was another article where, um, I think it was euros, if you have... Uh, 500 euro, 500,000 euros in an account, you're literally paying your bank to, you're paying them interest to have that money in that bank account. This is the upside down financial world. And guess what's the answer? Digital assets and the greatest digital asset ever created XRP. All right. Michael at VAL5 link sent, sent me this. As Bitcoin picks up momentum, Many crypto analysts are arguing that a perfect storm is brewing for the biggest bull run yet, and this is why. Now, they give five of the reasons why. There are so many reasons that I believe the next bull run is going to be so much bigger than anything we've seen. I've gone over a bunch of them before, but for now, I'm just going to give you their five reasons that they're talking about, which I do agree with. Um, the first is the having. They're talking about the having of Bitcoin coming up in 2020. And then gold is rising, and that's a, they're saying that's a good sign. Um, and then Libra, the introduction of Libra, they're saying regardless of what you think about Libra, um, it's, it, it says it's without a doubt the greatest publicity the cryptocurrency market has ever had. And I totally agree with that. Uh, but there, I'm going to give you, there are, with this, reason, this third reason here, I'm going to give you an, an additional at least five reasons 
that uh, this is going to be this reason is going to be compounded more and more because we're not just going to have it's not just going to be Libra. Think about this for a minute. If if we've had this much great marketing for cryptocurrency with Libra, what is it going to be like when Amazon announces they're going to do the same thing and Google announces it and all kinds of other companies and countries? What is that? What, how is that going to help marketing wise? I'm telling you. This is all in the midst of taking over the world from a marketing perspective and just from the perspective of the fail, what it, the failures of these people in traditional finance. It's coming at the perfect time, and I don't think it's a coincidence. Um, four, the trade war and the declining stocks. Well, it, you tell me. Um, all we've ever talked about is how Wall Street greed... Greed is good. That's the Wall Street philosophy. Well, do you think, just ask yourself this, Bitcoin this year has gone from around 3500 to as high as almost 14000 So if you're the Wall Street guy that's greedy and you're looking at your stock market imploding and you're seeing any asset, I don't care what it is, that is going up from 3500 to 14000 what are you going to do? Are you going to say, oh, well, no, I don't believe in Bitcoin. No, that's not how these people think. Where they, they go where they can make money. They don't care where they can make money. They go where they can make money. And that includes betting against the housing market when they're telling their clients to bet uh, on the housing market, which they did in the financial crisis. So they don't care where they can make the return. They want the return. Um, and then inflationary concerns, and this is an obvious, we've talked about how hyperinflation in Venezuela and Iran and all these other countries, and as a result, Bitcoin prices are, Bitcoin trades at a premium right now in Venezuela because of their inflation nightmare. And so then, and this is the point I was kind of making, 10 global enterprises looking to issue their own cryptocurrencies. Well, we know how Libra has helped get the word out about crypto. So what is, what's it going to be like? Uh, so we've got Facebook. What, what about, we've got JP Morgan. They've come out. What about when Walmart decides they're an Air Asia? Um, these are all people that are going to, issue, that are already talking about issuing their own digital assets. MUFG Bank, um, Arius Intel Corp, Amazon, Tencent, Google, Rakuten. What happens when all, what happens from a, um, marketing standpoint, just getting the word out about crypto. You know, I talk all the time about how what's amazing is everything that has been accomplished by Ripple and everything has that has happened to the XRP price over time has been done with less than probably 0.1% of the population that even know what Ripple or XRP is. And it's that way as I sit here right now. What happens when, when as a result of all of these pop culture things where all these companies that everybody in pop culture is familiar with what happens when they start to learn about cryptocurrencies as a result of these companies popping up and then that is only going to lead them to finding out more about the digital assets that were born of the blockchain technology itself such as ripple and bitcoin and all these others what happens is that less than 0.1% goes up to a much higher figure. And then what happens to the prices, folks? That is the point. Okay, XRP Crypto Wolf. At XRP Crypto Wolf, the U.S. Department of Commerce is hiring a computer scientist with specialized experience in cryptocurrency and blockchain. They need experience in setting up and conducting research analysis of blockchain, crypto, ledgers, and crypto con contracts. Well, I think that speaks for itself, doesn't it? And then our old buddies, Goldman Sachs, have now said that now's a good time to buy Bitcoin. I'm just, I, we have been waiting for them to come in and tell us in their infinite knowledge that we needed to buy Bitcoin. And finally, they are letting us in on this. Um, here it says, um, investment bank Goldman Sachs has recommended that investors should capitalize on the current price dip and buy Bitcoin. In an analyst note, part of which was tweeted Monday by Su Zhu, co-founder and CEO of Three Arrows, the bank says its short-term target for Bitcoin is 13971 and that investors should consider buying on any dips in the current scenario. So, 
What does this sh short term target for Bitcoin? Doesn't that sound like their analysts are beginning coverage on Bitcoin? I've told you many times before, folks, uh, all the traditional companies that do that do um, financial reporting like S&P 500, Morningstar, Fitch, um, all of the Moody's, they will all be rating digital assets before it's over. And so now you're starting to see if you don't think s and is watching these Goldman Sachs analysts covering this, just watch. They're all watching and they're going to jump in on this game as well, probably as backed comes online if I had to bet. But I thought it was important since Goldman Sachs is, fun, is telling us that it's time that we need to be buying Bitcoin. I thought I'd just throw a little reminder. This is from this is in the midst of the um, the bear market in on August 3rd of 2018. This is almost a year ago. Bitcoin is never coming back, Goldman Sachs, okay? And we don't need to go through all of this because this tells us everything we need to know. This is what they were telling us. This is called kicking you when you're down. And that's what they were doing. And if you don't think that they were buying it back then, then you need to, I've got an igloo that I will sell you if you don't think they were buying it back then. Um, and I'm in South Georgia, okay? Um, okay, from Mr. Rippleman, at Mr. Rippleman, he, he, he sent me this. Hey, digital asset investor, do you have cinnamon video in your coffee? Well, the answer to that is that I would. Um, they put out a thing yesterday saying that they, they were, anybody that wanted to try their, the cinnamon video, they're, they're just now putting it out. And I told them that I was in, but I have not heard from anyone at cinnamon video. So I don't, I don't know where what their plan is with all that type of thing. Uh, and maybe they don't want me to test cinnamon video. I don't know. We'll find out. I'm sure, I'm sure they're, they've got their hands full right now. Okay. Um, next from Jaquito McPhee, job cuts at investment banks near 30,000 as outlook deteriorates financial times. Folks, I've told you many times I was there in the financial crisis and I, what we are starting to see is really Get, giving me some EBGB financial crisis vibes. These are the types of things you began to see during the financial crisis. So keep your eyes open, folks. Keep your eyes open. Then Chinu Patel at Chinu Patel 29 sent me several things that were good. Uh, from Rhythm Trader, banks are cutting 30,000 jobs this year. They've failed to adapt to a changing world. Bitcoin and other technologies are starting to eat their lunch. Wall Street is mostly just vaporware. I love that. Buy Bitcoin, buy banks. Um, and then he sent me this. This is from I Am Legion. If you don't follow this guy, this guy's really sharp. Puts out a lot of good research and a lot of good documentation. He's at PAISAN2684960. Exactly my point, digital asset investor. Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and JP Morgan leaves R3, who strongly supports Ripple and XRP. Read Accenture's article on R3 and Ripple. There is no U.S. government's only big banks. When big banks say jump, the government says, you know. So, and then there's this. He, he's showing uh, that Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, and Morgan Stanley, who are not a fan of R3 Ripple, wants to make their, they want to, because they want to make their own solution. And he's showing where they left. In November 2016, Goldman Sachs, Santander, and Morgan Stanley each withdrew from the consortium. On December 4th, 16, it becomes da da da. In April 2017, JP Morgan Chase quit R3. Well, I think he's making the point here that R3 and what Ripple's doing is a and, and just digital assets in general are a global phenomenon. Well, um, he's he's telling you to watch my video. I think this is the video from yesterday where I told you um, all all we hear about with digital assets is how oh the gov you know the SEC and the government it takes time and all this and this well that's partially true yeah the governments are slow at anything but when the when the when the people have a in the people in government and the politicians and the bankers who who basically have them in their pockets when those people's uh, money is affected and they're and it's going to affect them directly the government moves very very fast and i pointed in that video to the the tarp that was passed back in the financial crisis it was passed in freaking and i'm talking about 
it's it, the Treasury takes it up to Congress. It goes through the House and the Senate and signed by the President in 23 days. And that is when their, the bank's money was on the line. That was to bail out the bankers. And remember, they didn't just bail them out, but within a year, those bankers with that bailout money were giving themselves record uh, bonuses. It was the it was the most insulting and criminal thing ever done in the history of finance, and none of them like to talk about it. I mean, there were there were laws that were literally suspended by the governments to do things that they wanted to do instead of what was within the law. And yeah, maybe they may have, may have rationalized it saying, oh, so-and-so signed off on it. Well, whatever. <laughs> they suspended laws in, in order to do what they did. A lot of people don't remember this, but back during the financial crisis, I saw it happen. I knew people that it happened to. We had, there were, remember, the United States government um, more or less took ownership of General Motors. And when they did that, you had government people that were sitting down with, with the people at, got at General Motors, and it wasn't just General Motors, I think it was other car dealerships, and they sat down and they all decided who, which dealerships were going to be the winners and losers. And some of those dealerships, some of those people were people who had been in business for 30 plus years, and, were, and they literally, and I, there are examples there are literally examples where they took dealerships from people who had been in that business for 30 years and handed them to friends of politicians. It happened, folks. That's what happens when government starts bailing people out. That's the reason that it is so evil. That is the reason that digital assets are so important. And the, but, but make no mistake, when governments start bailing out or bailing in or whatever you want to call it, that is pure, it, 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 it poisons the well of capitalism, and that is the problem. That is the reason it was so awful. That is the reason that the public should, should protest if they ever try to do anything like it again. But I think, that our, I think that our population has been dumbed down so much that I don't know that they, that they would. So the answer for you and I, those of us that are paying attention, is digital assets because Digital assets are the one thing that you're already seeing it. They go counter to all this insanity that's going on in these in these traditional markets because the digital assets and gold and silver represent truth in finance, whereas all this other stuff, the, the negative interest rates, all this stuff is garbage that is manufactured by the people that have been trying to control all of this. And um, I think that, that I Am Legion is making the point here that this is a global phenomenon, and Ripple and R3, they, it doesn't matter what Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley do, because these guys are, this is a global thing, and they can try to control it in the United States all they want. Well, he goes on here in this thread, and he says, um, JP Morgan has an impressive network, but it has two major flaws. JP Morgan is pegged to the dollar. It is controlled by the US. So he's making the point that this is a global thing, and these guys, they may not have liked working uh, the idea that, that R3 and Ripple were going to be so powerful in this equation, but it, that's tough. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button. And tell your friends and family that Ripple and R3 and XRP is global. It's global. They, we will ultimately win because this does represent the world changing and in in the uh, words of the ripple guy from the video yesterday you are about to see ripple and r3 put a dent in the universe and it's going to be a bigger dent even than a goldman sachs and a morgan stanley and a jp morgan and all that those guys their dent in the world is going to be a tiny dent when you compare it to what digital assets are about to do to this world thank you for listening